All right, so we're just about ready to start our network simplex method for it. So this is section 8.7 continued. <clears throat> but before we do, I just wanted to talk about what a basic solution, ba what a, what does a BFS look like on a network flow problem? Well, as it turns out, uh, the basic solution is going to come from a spanning tree. Um, so we're going to tr need to try to find a spanning tree or what I'm typically happens is I will give you the spanning tree. Um, the problem is is that not all spanning trees will give you a feasible solution. It will give you a basic solution but maybe not a feasible solution. So maybe uh, we'll do a quick example. So up here is our network, right? And so let's just find one possible spanning tree. Two, three, four. And so how about this one? We'll go that way, then this way, then this way. And let's fill in our B values. So B1 was seven, B2 was five, uh, B3, was minus 9 and b4 is minus 3. Okay and so before we could do anything else um, can we find the flow values on the spanning tree? Well remember that uh, on our nodes we have a conservation of flow which says that bi is equal to our outflow minus the inflow. And so this is going to be another one other formula that we're going to want to remember uh, when we're computing these uh, networks. Okay, so in this case, uh, let's see, uh, this is going to be a, so for B1, right, we'll have B1 is equal to just the outflow, right, edge 1, 2, and so therefore 1, 2 is going to be equal to 7, right? And then for arc 2, uh, what's that going to be? Well, uh, the equation, if you want to write it down, will be 5. That's going to be our B. And then the outflow you see here is the uh, arc 2, 3. So we could write uh, x1, 3 if you want. Uh, but then we'll subtract the inflow, which was 1, 2. Uh, we have here 7, right? And so that means that x1, 3 must be 12. And so we put a 12 there. Good. And then uh, what's going to be the last uh, flow value here then? Uh, if this is negative 3, this is going to have to be negative 3, right? And so uh, this is the problem with this flow, and that is that uh, we can't have flow values, we can't have xij that are negative, right? So um, the set of variables x1, 2, x2, 3, well, I could even put the value. Oh, let me do it this way. x12, x23, x43 equals 7, 12, minus 3 is basic for this problem, but not feasible because of the negative 3. Okay. <clears throat> so um, there are ways to get around this, but I'm typically just going to give you the, the um, spanning tree that you need. Okay, so how about this one? Uh, in fact, uh, why don't we do it this way? Uh, maybe I'll write down this, the tree here. And just for fun, we will use our algorithm for computing the minimum spanning tree, and we'll use the minimum spanning tree for the costs. Now that's not going to minimize our problem necessarily, because um, this minimum cost algorithm is not taking the flow into account, right? It's just taking these costs on the edges into account. And so uh, this is just one way to get a tree, right? So do you remember what our algorithm was? Go with the minimum cost first, then it'll be this edge. So our edge uh, 2, 4 will keep. 
Uh, next up is 2-3, so we'll keep that edge. And then edge with cost 3 will be that one. And so let's see what happens with that as our um, network here. I'll just redraw it so it's easier to see. Okay, go, whoops, goes that way, that way, and that way. And now let's write down the flow. B1 is 7, B2 is 5, B4 was minus 3, B3 is minus 9. Okay, and so in this case, we'll just have to have the flow out at 7 here, right? And then what will the flow have to be here? We'll have to break up the 5. Let's see, 7 and 2 is 9. And then that leaves us with the 3 in that one. Good. So that gives us the flow. Everybody good so far? And so this is now representing a BFS. We get our initial BFS. Very good. And now we want to compute um, the solution to the dual. Um, so, uh, the way we're going to do this is uh, on the beginning node, we're going to set the value of the dual equal to zero, just like we did in the transportation problem. And then each of the other nodes is going to have a y value that we're going to compute. And we're going to compute it according to the formula that um, for edge, um, or you could say for the variable xij, right? Uh, if xij is basic, then we know that cij is equal to yi minus yj. Good. So let's use those now. Um, so using the fact that y1 is 0, and I've got the edge 1, 3 here, I'm going to take the cost from 1, 3, which was 3, and so, um, let's see, well, let me, I'll, I'll just call it uh, x13 here. Uh, that's going to be our one basic variable. What are the other ones? x23 and x24. x24, just so we remember those. And so then we're going to take cij equals yi minus yj, right? So for x13, the cost was, I'm just looking it up here, 3. x23, the cost is 2. And for x24, the cost was 1. Okay. And now this is y1 minus y3. So y1 is 0 minus y3. So therefore y3 is equal to minus 3. Good. So up here I could write down that y3 is minus 3. All right. Now for 2, 3, we have uh, the cost, 2, is going to be y2 minus y3. So that's y2 is unknown still, but y3 is known. Right? So uh, y2, it looks like, is minus 1, huh? Good. And finally, our last one then. Um, y2 or x24 is going to be y2 minus y4. y2 is minus 1. Okay. And so therefore, uh, add 1 to both sides. And y4 is equal to negative 2. Huh? Good. Um, so that gives us all of our y values. Um, again, y1 is equal to 0, y2 is equal to uh, negative 1, y3 is equal to negative 3, and y4 is equal to minus 2. Good. Now why do we need those? That's because we said that for non-basic variables, right, the value of row 0 
is Cij minus Yi plus Yj. These are not values of the flow, by the way, right? These are values of the row zero. And so what are the non-basic variables in this case? They're the edges that were not connected up here. So that's going to be 1, 2, and 4, 3. So there's only two variables that are not basic. And again, that was x1, uh, 2, and x4, 3. Good. And then I'm just writing my formula up here so I don't forget what it was. <laughs> and I've got my y's over here if I need them. Okay, so the cost for 1, 2 was 4. And the cost for 4, 3 is 5. And so this is going to be y1, which is 0, uh, plus y2, which is minus 1. Okay, so what do we get from that? 4 minus 1, it looks like, is 3. Good. Uh, then for this one, it's y4, which is negative 2, plus yj, which is x, uh, y3, which is negative 3. I think I might have had a different value in class. Well, we'll just have to pay attention to those uh, negative signs. Uh, but that's going to be 7, it looks like, right? 7 minus 3 will give me a 4. Good. And so what we see here is that because these values are both positive, then we have up here, this is actually the optimal flow. And so as it turned out, the uh, minimum cost, or the, I'm sorry, the minimum spanning tree formula, or the algorithm, gave us a BFS that actually uh, worked out for our flow. Very good. So this is the standard way of computing uh, the network simplex uh, numbers. So let's review what we did here. So once we had our initial BFS, uh, we wrote down the flow values uh, and then what did we do? Uh, actually these to compute the uh, values of the dual you don't really need the flow values but uh, so each of the basic variables we went ahead and computed um, the, the solution to the dual okay uh, using this formula Notice that this was the same thing we did in the transportation problem, right? These would be the U's and the V's. These are the U's and the V's from the transportation problem. Okay, and so then we computed all of our Y's, and then you turn your attention to the non-basic variables. And in the transportation problem, these were the numbers that we were computing uh, in the parentheses, right? The cost minus well, actually, we uh, subtracted the sum of the two in the in the UV problem because we had a different pattern of numbers in the matrix A. Yeah, the y i the minus y i plus y j comes into play here because of the um, plus or minus ones that we get in the matrix A. Okay, so this has a slightly different pattern than the transportation problem did, but and then uh, we look to see if the both if the numbers are positive. Remember, these are the row zero values, and in this case, they're both positive. That tells us that we have an optimal solution. Now, if one of these were negative, that's when we would actually have to do something. And so that is going to be the uh, topic of the next video. So I'm going to go into a, um, into a more in-depth example in the next video uh, from start to finish, and hopefully, well, we'll see how long it's going to take us. <laughs> I'll see you then.